What's up everybody, my name is Big Cam. Welcome back to another Comically Boston bonus episode. Today, we are talking about the finale for The Acolyte, episode 8, The Acolyte. And this episode and this whole series, I really liked. And a lot of people online are gonna, good, gonna tell you it's awful and terrible. And a lot of those people haven't even watched this show. And then a lot of people watch the show and then just want to hate it. And they're... Some of their critiques, sure, can be justified, but a lot of them are just nonsensical, you know, self-opinionated bullshit. And, you know, it's just whatever filter their brain has, they see the show and they just can't like the show. So they just spout out all this negative bullshit and try and get other people to hate the show that like the show, right? Like... You can have your opinion and do whatever the fuck you want and and not like whatever you want, but stop trying to make other people not like it because you don't. Like, that shit is not cool, and I don't know where in society it's become cool to just go, oh, I hate something in, that you like? You're wrong. You should hate this. What? Like, let people do what they want to do and like what they like, and if you don't like it, don't watch it. Like, there's so many people that are like, pretending like they're getting forced to watch this show and then go Disney Star Wars is awful this isn't what George Lucas had in mind what are you talking about George Lucas is an old man he's now senile and cannot do this if he could he would and I got news for you Dave Filoni's in charge he is George Lucas's apprentice right like this whole Star Wars master and apprentice Dave Filoni is his apprentice. He's not doing Disney Star Wars. Oh my god, it's Disney Star Wars. If I hear Disney Star Wars, people are retarded. All that means is that, oh, Star Wars used to have a big budget. Now it has a gargantuan budget. Like, what are they talking about? Like, oh, they got bought billet by a billion dollar company. Let's go make more billions. No, it's Disney, now it's bad. Oh, but I love The Mandalorian. The people are retarded. So stupid, I can't deal with stupidity. But let's get into The Acolyte, the thing we're here to talk about today. Last week, I had a couple of posters here that I actually really liked. A couple of fan-made posters. I don't know who made these, but man, this like watercolored one looks cool, but the other one looks dope too. One of those would be the thumbnail. The Acolyte. Mm. You know, like, uh, <laughs> maybe that will be the thumbnail, who knows. I have a feeling after this last episode we had, we we saw the final flashback, Kelnaka, what happened to him, Torben, how he got his face scar. Although in that episode, I didn't see, like, a clear, like, this is where he got his face scar type thing. But, uh, Soul's little fight with Kelnaka there was dope. And I have a feeling this is gonna end up into a season two. Um, or at least I hope it ends up in a season two. It doesn't get cancelled because of haters online and review bombing. Like, just don't watch the show, you losers. But Mother Anaseya and Mother Coral here. I don't know if Mother Anaseya will still be alive. It was kind of said and showed that she died by way of Soul's hand. But she also was able to turn into a smoke monster and create life with the Force. So, like... I'm not sure if Mother NSA is dead, but I, I'm almost positive Mother Coral here is is gonna show up in some way, some form. Maybe she'll become like a leading knight sister or something. We also have in this entire series the thing that's been the most interesting to me, right? Like, I will say like as much as I like the episode, the acolyte, it's not perfect. But I'm not just going to say everything I don't like about the show and then just skip over the stuff that I did like. I'm going to focus on the stuff I liked and then just acknowledge the things I didn't like, right? Like, Amanda Stenberg did an amazing job, but the relationship between May and Chimere and o Osha and Soul and vice versa... I should have been more bought into the twins and that whole story, but really all the only thing that made me watch this show week to week was Chimere and this the stranger, whatever his actual name is. We don't really know, but Chimere here like the with the cortosis helmet and the the crazy grin smile. I'm into that. Him headbutting lightsabers and, and they turn off us learning can, cortosis can do that. You know, that type of shit was dope. Uh, seeing the stranger go on a violent tear, you know, that unmasking of Chimere and us seeing it, the reveal of him, him having a dagger blade in a, in a normal lightsaber, like, 
super dope characters, right? And like these characters that we had previously not known in the Star Wars universe, I'm now, you know, all here for. Like even the ones we lost, like Jackie, I was super here for that. Soul, I was super here for that. Uh, Indara, I was here for. Kelnaka, I was here for. Fuck, Tor Torbin, I was here for. Even Vanestra Rowe, even though we'll talk about her at the end. I don't know if we're meant to like her or not, but uh, Vanestra, you know, like, there, there was a bunch of cool characters that, like, are in the Star Wars universe that I'm now a fan of and I want to see further in mostly here Kymir, right? And the stranger. And now his relationship with Osha, I'm in. Like, I want to see more of this. But getting into this episode, uh, we start off with uh, Osha was in the helmet and she was breathing at the last time we saw her at the end of episode 6, um, which makes episode 7 kind of weird because it is a weird placement for the flashback and making it a whole episode. But, you know, like if you don't remember two weeks ago, the episode ended with Osha putting on the Cortosis helmet and she was going, Ooh, you know, kind of like the Darth Vader breathing you hear underneath the helmet. And, uh, Kymir had told her to put on that helmet, but she, he, I don't know if he actually thought she would have, uh, but we see her put on the helmet and what it looks like on the outside of this helmet and what's going on, and we see something dark happening and taking over Kymir, but let's, I have a clip of this, let's play it. Musha. Wow, so the helmet, I don't know if the helmet was doing that. I think there was another Sith being that wasn't Chimere that made Chimere see dark and made Chimere's eyes go black and Chimere fought through this darkness to get the helmet off of Osha's head. I mean, gets the helmet off of Osha's head and she's struggling to breathe too and they both are, but she says, I saw May. She was reaching out to me and it's like, all right. Okay, but at the same time, you're like, what just happened there? But then we cut back to May on the ship talking to Sol, and Sol's telling her what's good. Right before Sol is about to tell her what she is, she shocks him and then escapes. Sol flies after her. They're flying through, you know, like almost like a Saturn's rings. It almost looks like an asteroid belt, but like tiny, tiny little debris particles type thing. And she flies in between one of the rings. So it's like debris, debris, and she's in between. And his ship's bigger. So she's like, he won't follow. He flies right into the debris and is like just bowling through it. And then Basil helps May and kind of disrupts the ship a little bit and Soul goes spinning out of control which sends her spinning out of control and she ends up crash landing. Then we cut to Coruscant. Right as soon as she crash lands it just cuts abruptly to Coruscant and we see Vanestra Rowe has a visitor from a senator and he's heard about the incident and she's like I've told I can promise you it's all under control the Jedi that were hurt and he goes there was more than one like he didn't know as much information as she now she's telling him too much information and he's a sassy little one he's like you know talking mad shit and he's like yeah the I think the Jedi need to be shut down and, and this is will be handled at, at the Senate level and she's like no I promise I can handle this like this will be a Jedi internal affair type thing and it's almost like the politics of Star Wars always geek me out because I hate politics in real life but the politics of Star Wars I eat up I'm like ooh the corrupt Senate fucking with the Jedi the Jedi are corrupt from my perspective the Jedi are evil <laughs> Don't try it. If you guys know those quotes, you're a real one. Um, <laughs> a lot of the haters. See, a lot of the haters are skipping over all that stuff and just commenting negative stuff. See, fuck you. <laughs> but we cut back to Osha and Kymir, and she says, we go together or we don't go at all. And Osha is not her sister. May made the deal without even thinking about it. So Kymir's like, would you be my apprentice? She goes, no. And asks her one more chance, your last chance. And she's like, no. Uh, and he's like, wow, 
you really aren't your sister. So now she has a confirmation from the master that's known them both. Osha is very different from May, and May is different from Osha. And it's crazy how they started in opposite positions at the beginning of this, and now they do a full flip. It's, ugh. it's, it's good writing in that sense, but there's bad writing in other senses. You know what I mean? Like, there's some things that they just kind of say to the audience for, like, the dumbest people in the room. And uh, some people take it personal, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. It, that line isn't necessarily for us that understand what's going on. That line is for the people that might have been a little lost at this moment, you know? Like, people think that Star Wars is made just for Star Wars fans. No, Star Wars is made for everybody, and everybody can learn and find Star Wars at different times and different eras and different places and learn to love this franchise and, and community of people but instead, there's just been toxic people online. It must be a bunch of those Snyder fans made their way into Star Wars communities and started hating shit. Fuck them. You know, all of them talking shit and being weird. I'm into the people that talk about the things they do like, you know, like. But so, Chimere and Osha talk and he tells her that she's different from May. And then they get on a ship and they take off. And they're heading towards wherever May just crash landed. And then we get this crazy shot. Uh, that isn't explained, it isn't come, doesn't come back to anything, but just is basically a tease to basically say, hey, you want to know who this guy is? Give me a season two type bullshit. And I hate that, and I love it at the same time. Uh, but I have a clip here of what we see. What? So this just like cloaked, eerie, dark figure peers around a rock as he sees the ship taking off. And he has one red eye and he has this like no nosy, dark, Darth Squidward looking ass face. He's kind of got like claw fingers, like definitely seems like a dark side being. And this blew up the internet, this one scene. And is this the Sith known as Darth Plagueis the Wise? You know, the same person that Palpatine talked to Anakin about in, I think, the Revenge of the Sith at that, uh, like, meeting. You know, they're all in that, like, dome, and there's, like, some crazy shit happening, and he goes, Anakin, have you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, the tragedy? <laughs> like, and it goes through, and he, he, like, starts to tell him the story of how he learned how to save people from death type thing and this is what gets Anakin on his side type thing like you could teach me this power and so I believe what this is is like they're gonna teach us where Chimere came from who this Plagueis guy is who probably showed Chimere Cortosis type shit and then you know show how Palpatine comes into the equation at some point you know but this is still you know I think 160, 200 years before Phantom Menace. So, like, we have some time we can cover in, in between here and there. Then we cut back to Sol landing on the same planet that's now May is crashed down and Osha and Kaimi are coming to. He flicks on his tracker. We cut back to Coruscant and the Jedi. They see Sol's tracker flicked back on. So, Vanestra sees this. They start, obviously, heading to the tracker to pick up on Sol and what's happened here. Cut to Ocean Chimir coming back to where it all started, and they're coming to Brendog. So it just so happens that May crash landed here on Brendog, the place it all started, and you know, and here we are, back where it started, and everyone's back together again, and now they're older. Soul and May are already there. Soul is looking for May. Osha walks up with Chimir. Chimir disappears. May's inside the building, walking through the rubble of the fire and damage that had happened. And we're seeing the aftermath and how the place looks aged and roots are growing over. And nobody's inhabiting the place anymore because the coven that lived there all got wiped out 15, 16 years ago, right? <laughs> but as Soul's walking through, he's yelling, May! May! leads the stranger, Chimere, right to him, and Chimere and Sol have a fight, and this is a wild fight, and I have a clip here, just these, the lightsaber duels in this show looked, looked so good. Ooh, 
I love the throws the lightsabers both like ends of his hilt and they both get deflected by Soul and then he like pulls them to come back and he's about to punch him and Soul just BAM deflects them all with the force hell yeah and then right after this after Soul pushes them back he kind of like pulls together his shit and it is so funny just this little quick clip That cracked me up for some reason. He like just pulls together his lightsabers, he's pissed, and then just kinda, and it just seems like so like, instead of like a charge and like stab, he just kinda starts swinging this thing all over the place, and his helmet like throws back, and it just looks like he, it, pure anger is fighting, right, this, this Jedi, instead of a man versus man. You know, it's literally just anger, hate, suffering versus soul. <laughs> then we cut to Osha finding May. Now, Osha is in black, May's in the white. They have fully flipped. Osha's with Chimere, May's with Soul, but they're back where it all started. May tries to tell Osha that Soul killed their mother. Osha gets angry attacks. She sees Pip with with May and Pip squirts Osha in the eye and I was like, "Oh my god, even Pip's flipped." But we get Amanda Stenberg versus Amanda Stenberg, Osha versus May, twin versus twin, and like just the the analytics of this, like Amanda Stenberg is not a twin, so they had to shoot this two ways, like two different times, two different outfits, and then cut it together, and for it to look as good as it looks, shout out to them, you know, like I've always been fascinated on two of the same person in the same scene shots, but normally they're not fights like sometimes they're just conversations and they're hard to do or like they it, the moment they hug the they interact with each other that stuff's hard to do but what, fighting like a full fight scene with them doing it is crazy but i have this little fight here that, that they have and then it's intercut between soul and chimere's fight and it's just a great shot Oof, just such a good shot that they kick the legs and the legs cross and they're having this like battle and they're going back and forth and they're black and white and you know kind of going in this circular direction very much so the yin yang symbol and you know I, I just love that kind of aspect of the yin yang in this uh, and then it cuts to the locking lightsabers Chimere and Soul so good and as they lock lightsabers, we hear like normally the lightsaber screech of the lightsabers together, but we hear it even louder and more focused. And it sounds like a woman's scream, but it just says lightsaber screeching. And Soul ends up slicing Chimere's blade. So now Chimere doesn't have a lightsaber type deal. Okay. Uh, Chimere takes off his helmet. He's pissed. May comes and takes Soul's blade. And Chimere goes, Take him down, May, and your journey will be complete. And she goes, no. Soul tells May she and Osha are the same person, right? So now Soul explains to May what is happening to her, what is she, everything like her mother created her, uh, he admits to killing her mother, Osha hears this, asks if this is true, Soul and Osha have start to have like a heart to heart, and it, it's like, you know, you could start to see her anger boiling over. And he's like, I tried to do what was best for you. And she's like, you lied to me. And then finally she starts to choke him. And he falls to his knees and goes, stop talking. Right? So, in Kanye's in the background like, ooh. And then she bleeds her lightsaber. Or, or it's actually Soul's lightsaber. So his blue kyber crystal, she's like holding in his hand in the hilt. And we start to see it start to bleed a little bit in her hand. And we're like, oh shit, you know, we haven't really seen bleeding lightsabers in live action Star Wars. We've only really seen it one time and that was in the Jedi Survivor video game, right? And then Osha chokes Soul to death, right? So now Osha's completed the tasks that were at the start of this whole series with Mei. And she had to kill these Jedi and then kill one with no weapon. And she does this. She chokes him to death. And even Chimere didn't do that. Chimere just snapped his neck, right? Like, so choking him to death, and then 
just leave Soul's dead body on the ground there. Chimera comes over and tries to like stand next to her and like take the lightsaber out of her hand. We see it flicker blue at first before it turns fully red as she holds it to Chimera. And Chimera's just kind of like, hey, 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 I thought we were on the same side. <laughs> and then we get the Jedi in Venestra showing up from Soul's tracker. A little too late now, Soul's dead. Uh, Venestra senses Chimere and says, you're still alive, ooh. And then Chimere throws on his helmet because he doesn't want to be sensed on who he is by Venestra. And May says to Osha, we gotta go. And she, we see now May, how she escaped and where she went after she fell. And she said after she fell, she fell into this tunnel. And then we cut to Venestra seeing Soul's body and she can sense what happened to Soul, what happened here on Brendok, what happened to May and her mother, and what happened to Kelnaka, right? Like, she can hear all this uh, as she's, like, looking at Soul's body. So I'm like, ooh, can she, does she have kind of this force sense power, kind of like how Kestis does in those Jedi games? But as she's sitting there looking and sensing all this, the stranger's up lurking and looking at her. And as soon as she looks and feels like where he was standing, she looks and he's gone. You're like, ooh, ooh, I love little shit like that. But May fills in Osha on what else May did when she was little. And she was like, where did you go after this? And she ran back to the tree that was the very start of this episode uh, of the series. And the very start of the, the season one. And when they were little kids at this tree. And she said that she ran back to this tree and waited. And uh, they both apologize and cry to each other. And then Chimere shows up and takes the lightsaber. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And he goes, if I can find you, so can the Jedi. Basil, we cut to Basil's tracking and running after Osha and May. And we cut to back to the two, three of them talking at the tree. And May says, What do you want, Osha? And Osha says to Chimere, I will go with you and train with if you leave my sister. And Chimere says, I can wipe May's memory. And Osha has a good cry before May gets her memory wiped under the tree that we all started at. And it's like, beautiful little symbolism and full circle from the whole first season but at the same time i'm like man i now i just want the second season i still gotta find out who this chimere guy is who's that sith in the cave what the fuck Venestra's up to like what and like Venestra Rowe, the only thing that we really see her do with that lightsaber with this season is cut a bug in half that's it like come on we needed some more lightsaber with her right like figure out her deal but maybe that's gonna be all of season two type shit and figure out like what's her relationship with Chimir and then to Palpatine and that whole shit, you know what I'm saying? So the Jedi show up, find May with her memory wiped. They go back to Coruscant, Venestra talks to May. May only remembers the fire that destroyed her home and soul killing her mother. She goes, your last memories were when you were eight years old. And she's like, uh, I think so. And Venestra tells everyone that soul killed his whole team in that it was just one rogue Jedi and she keeps this hush hush. Why would she do such a thing? To make it look like the Sith aren't around? Like what does she know? Like what is she hiding? Ooh. And then Vanestra says, you have to help me find a pupil of mine before he turned to evil. So Chimere was Vanestra's pupil and May's going to be helping Vanestra and, and Osha's with Chimere. And we cut to Chimere and Osha back on that planet where they were before, standing by the water. And he holds her hand and we end on those two just holding hands. And I thought this was going to be the cut to the credits. But no, there's one more scene. And that scene is Vanestra goes, sorry to, to disturb you, Master. We need to talk to Yoda. Master Yoda is in this bitch. And... It's the back of his head and his ears, but we all know who Yoda is and why is he and Venestra talking and why is she covering covering up Sith killing Jedi and Jedi being bad, you know, like why is she making Soul look like the bad guy? Soul was not the bad guy. He was one of my favorite parts from the season. I really enjoyed this season so far. I would love to know what you guys thought of this season. Do you want a season two? If you're a hater, fuck off. Don't watch my channel. Um, you know, I don't need to hear your negativity and you don't need to watch this channel. No one's forcing you to watch this video, nor is anyone forcing you to watch Disney Star Wars. So you can go piss off that way. All of you cool people, all, you can comment down below or message me on my other social medias. Links in the description below. Subscribe if you're new. Like that 
smash that like button, you know, do all those things for me to support the channel. But also comment below which one of these Star Wars Disney Plus shows has been your favorite so far. If I had to rank them, I'd probably go Obi-Wan last, and, and, and this is just a ranking of what they are, they all have to fall someplace, but I want to make clear that I liked all of these shows, but Obi-Wan I'd put last, then probably Boba Fett, then probably the Acolyte here in the middle, and then uh, Mandalorian, Andor, and Ahsoka. But comment below, what are your rankings? What do you think of this show? What did you think of season one? I'm hoping Leslie Headland gets a season two. We figure out more about that Sith and Chimere and all that jazz. So stay tuned. If you're looking forward to seeing this stuff, comment below. Hit me up on my other social medias. I'd love to talk more Acolyte and Star Wars with y'all. And till next time, I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.